Hi, this is Ibadi X from The Candid Frame. And I was out shooting this afternoon, and, and I was thinking about what I wanted while I was out in the street. And you know, I take a lot of pictures of people walking down the street, and most, most of the time, there's just a whole lot of nothing. It's, it's just people walking down the street. And I'm always looking for something special. We've talked about gesture before, but I want to take that a little further and really talk about body language. Uh, if you spend enough time in the street, um, people will do more than just walk down the street. There'll, there'll be a moment where their body language is actually commuting, communicating and expressing something about their state of mind, or, or it may reveal something about a relationship that they have with someone who they're out on the street with. And for me, that's that's the big challenge. Can I make a photograph of moments like that, which visually are far more interesting than just yet another picture of somebody walking down the street? So I chose three pictures that I think really exemplify that idea. So we have our first shot here, shot by Satyricon M, shot with a Canon EOS 5DSR at 1 400th of a second at f2.8 at ISO 200. Now we don't see the entire woman in this shot, but do we? what we do see is really telling. She's got what looks to be this incredibly beautiful dress. Uh, she's got these impeccable shoes that she's uh, adjusting. We see these sandals here, so it looks like she was just changing out of those sandals into those, into those shoes. There's a suitcase there, so I don't think that she was exactly traveling. Uh, it seems like this was probably some sort of event, maybe some sort of fair where she was purposely getting dressed in this way for for this occasion. I'm not sure what the story is, but you know it it raises a lot of lot of questions. But look at the the, the body language here. I for me that says so much of why I like this photograph. I mean, her body, her legs, her arm create these very strong graphic lines within the frame. We get these triangles that uh, sort of repeat throughout throughout the frame, but especially in the center. Um, but the body language uh, tells me so much about this woman. I, I just see her standing like ram rod straight uh, in this shot. It seems like she's, even though she's adjusting her shoe, there seems to be a sense of poise uh, to this woman. And I like the fact that the photographer saw this moment and captured it in the way that he did. Um, when I would see, when I see someone dressed like this, my first instinct, of course, is, oh, I want to make a portrait of them. But there's so many other opportunities that can be had, and this is one of them. People adjusting their clothing can can be really interesting in terms of gesture, in terms of body language. Uh, but by excluding the, the face, not only of this subject, but everyone else within the frame, it all becomes about the body language and, and the gesture here. And uh, I really like the shot because of that. I like the fact that this is an alternative to the obvious. And that's something that I'm always trying to hunt for when I'm out there on the street. I don't want to go for the obvious. I don't want to go for the same thing that I've photographed over and over and over again. Um, whether I'm just standing in a street corner for half an hour or I'm actually walking up and down the street, I want to be ready to be observant of the unusual, the different. And it happens, and it happens, but you have to be really attentive. You have to be very, very vigilant. Like here's a shot by Barry Lohman, a shot with a Olympus EM5 at one 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 sixtieth of a second at f8 at ISO 400. He calls this "Mom, can we go?" Um, so it seems like there was some tension happening between this mother and son there, and the body language. Uh, wow, this this says a whole lot, right? With his left hand, he's sort of embracing her arm, but then with his right hand, he has it clenched in a in a fist. And I don't think he was swinging at his mom. But there's some sort of aggression that's being expressed in that gesture and the way that he's looking at her and just the way she's responding to it. 
you know, how, how, how many parents can probably relate to moments like this when you have a, a kid who is just not cooperating, but they're trying to manipulate and control you, and the parent is just being stoic and just saying, you know, and they're just like, I've been through this a thousand times. I'm just going to ignore the kid. And, 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 and that's the sense of, of what I get here, that there's this sort of tension that there's, there's an attempt at manipulation and control that's happening here. And uh, it's a really interesting photograph. I mean, when you're out in the street, you always will see parents with their kids. And usually it's them going from point A to point B. But when you're out with, with your kids, there's always this dynamic that, that can happen at, at, at different moments. And it can be really interesting because there's always these sort of power plays and, and that, that can happen, especially when you're dealing with kids around on this age. And I think that this, this image is just incredibly telling. I don't know if this is Barry's family or friends or, 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 or what, but uh, whether they're complete strangers or whether they're people that he knew, the fact that he saw this moment and made the photograph, uh, he deserves kudos for. Because this is one of those moments that we've all experienced, but we rarely photograph, right? Even if we're you know participants in it, we don't see this as a, as a photo-worthy moment, but look at how this moment really results in an exceptional photograph. And as a street photographer, if you want to move beyond just simply photographing people walking down the street, you have to be attentive to this. I'm always looking at uh, people, whether it's a group of two or three or four. I, I always stop and observe what's happening amongst those people because if they're interacting with each other, there's always going to be this action-reaction that's happening within that group, regardless how small or how big it is. And uh, sometimes that observation can lead me to say, let me, let me stick here. Let me stay around here. Let me observe this. Let me start making photographs. Let me start getting closer and closer to see whether or not I might be able to pull a gem from all of this. Uh, I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable doing that, but for me, uh, that's one of the things that I'm trying to do to sort of challenge myself to make really interesting photographs that are not, you know, not par for the course. Now here's a Gustavo Gomez. He shot this with a Nikon D600 at uh, 125th of a second, f2.8 at ISO 140. And wow, talk about body language, talk about expression and gesture. All of that stuff is here. Just this spontaneous moment of just joy of of you know of of expression in this kid. Uh, great, great moment and. I wonder what led up to this, whether, if you saw this moment, it would be too late to photograph it. You really sort of had to sort of, sort of anticipate it. You kind of see what's going on with this, with this kid, and then you get the sense of there's something about to happen. And then there's ex this explosion of, of emotion, of expression. And it makes for a fantastic, fantastic shot. I mean, there's so much to love here. I mean, the, the, the color here is marvelous with the umbrella, the green in the background, uh, the sort of earth tones on the ground. Uh, these figures, guys in the in, in the background, uh, are not a huge distraction for me. I don't mind that they're they're there. They they give us a, a, a sense of depth to the image. Um, I don't know if this woman is the boy's mother or grandmother or aunt. I don't I don't know what the relationship is. Uh, just by their proximity and then the fact that the hand is just underneath the umbrella almost or um, right in front of the subject's face tells me that there's some sort of relationship here. Why this kid is doing what he's doing, I have no idea. But whatever the reason, it's just like, wow, it's a kid being a kid. That, that, that you know, that, that spontane spontaneity of emotion is just so wonderful to, to capture and I know people are really reticent about photographing children. I am. I, I don't photograph kids a lot. But there are moments when I will see them with their parent or their guardian or, or, or whatever. And I'll see moments like that and I can't help but make the, the, the photograph. Um, I'm so glad that Gustavo made this picture. I don't know. Again, I don't know if he was 
related in any way with these people here. But that that moment, whether they were family or whether they were strangers, is just it's just a fantastic fantastic photograph. And I think one of the, the things that, as a photographer, particularly those of us who practice our, our craft in the street, it's this idea of, of you're always hunting for pictures, right? You're always walking up and down the street looking for something to photograph. And that's one of the reasons why I will often uh, find a spot and I'll just stay there and I'll just stick there and I'll just, I'll just watch. I'll just observe. I, I won't assume that just walking up and down the street endlessly is going to give me the, the best result. Sometimes it's just finding a place to camp out and just observing people. And when I see pockets of people, I may gravitate towards them just to see what may what may, uh, what may may happen. Because uh, moments like this are, are, are fantastic. But it's rarely that you're going to See moments like this when you're just walking down the street, see it, and be able to react fast enough that you make the shot. Part of this is that you have to sort of get into the mindset of being able to regularly uh, anticipate. That's when the magic can really happen, or at least happen in a consistent level. All right, I hope you found that, uh, that short video helpful. Uh, if you haven't already joined the Flickr group, please do. All you have to do is ask to be added, and I'll be, I'll be glad to, to do that. We have so many people that are adding uh, week to week, uh, which is great. And uh, I take that as a sign that you're really enjoying the video. So fantastic. Uh, and if you are finding us for the first time and you've never heard of the Candid Frame, well, it's more than a YouTube channel. It's a podcast in which I interview photographers from all over the world. And we just completed our 300th episode, uh, which I did with a wonderful dance photographer, Lois Greenfield. And she's one of the reasons I, I chose this topic for, for today, um, because she captures dancers and motion and time in a marvelous, marvelous way. So if you've never heard of the show, make that the first interview you listen to, because I think you'll, you'll really enjoy it. And if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe. All right. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.